Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I'm very happy to welcome Josh Flower here, who is a mindset coach. So we're going to get to know him and have a great conversation, see how he can help someone out there. Uh, Josh, let's kick this off right, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Right on, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show, by the way. Really been looking forward to this. So My pleasure. Yes, I'm a, I'm a mindset coach. I help people, in essence, get their shit together. That's sort of my tagline. And we do this by aligning thoughts and actions with the lives that people want. You know, And it sounds so simple, but it's not easy in practice. And so that's what I help people with. And what qualified me for this is a really long career in sales. So I've been a professional seller for over 20 years, almost 25 years now. Uh, and also some regular life stuff too. I've been married 25 years. I got two beautiful kids that are almost completely out of the nest and <laughs> I've learned a lot in my life and in my career and I feel that I can help people. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do. If I can give you some advice, they never really leave the nest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to get that sense, man. One of mine is almost 22. So yeah. <laughs> so what made you want to really help people? Ah, oh, I like that question. So going, going back to when I was a young guy, I actually went to college and I had this idea that I was going to be a social worker. And this was in the 90s, you know, not to date myself too much, but I came out of school and sort of the climate where I live. And so I live in Ontario, Canada, was that these jobs weren't really around. Like they were making cuts to all of these programs and it was tough, you know, was, I... I think at the time I sent out about 200 resumes and hardly got a response. So I was forced to sort of pivot and move in a different direction. That's what brought me towards sales. But I always had this desire, you know, to, to help people. Um, and selling is kind of, I mean, it is helping people in essence. You're learning about people's problems. You're mm -hmm. really trying to understand those problems, right? And then you're trying to help them solve the problem. And so that's been enjoyable, but... After close to 25 years, I just got to the point where I thought, you know, am I just going to keep selling cooler stuff and, you know, doing this more and more? Or is there something more for me? And I got turned on to the idea of really putting out a positive message online and just attracting people that might be down with my message. And that's one of the things I love about your medium, podcasting, and just all of these mediums is you can just put your voice out there and see who it vibes with. And so um, once I realized I could do that, you know, I thought, yeah, let's give this a shot. I started recording videos on Instagram each day, just showing people how I was living and just sort of went from there. But yeah, I'd say it goes back a long way, man. You know, this desire to help people. And now I'm actually getting to do it in my fifties. So pretty cool. Well, you know, that old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You know, you get guys that are around our age that, you know, they're kind of set in their ways. How do you help them get kind of past that if they're not really getting ahead and whether it's sales or whatever they're doing in life? Yeah. And you're right. You know, I think for most of us, it's just a natural part of being a human being, right? We get comfortable. I think one of the great things about humans is we're always looking for efficiencies. We're always looking for systems to help us, right? And I'm sure you feel this way, but I, I've got my life much more comfortably organized now than when I was in my 20s, you know? And that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. But I think you're absolutely right. A lot of guys and gals, you know, they get to this age and maybe like what happened to me, you look around and say, is, is yeah, am I, am I content with where I'm at and my progress? Or do I want to make a push, you know, near the the end of my career or the end of these years here. And so how I get people to sort of wake up to that is, yeah, I, I think sort of part of the answer is they need to be motivated, you know, and I can, I can bring that about by asking the right questions, you know, or asking people if, you know, if they're content with where they're at, but usually it's gotta be that the person is, 
is looking for something and, you know, think that there's something else out there. And so I get a lot of people that respond to what I'm doing on Instagram specifically, because mm -hmm. you know what I'm showing there, Kyle, is when I wake up in the morning, what I do in the morning, when I go to the gym, the things that I'm eating, I talk a little bit of the stuff that I've learned in my life and career. And people will just approach me and say, hey, you know, that's really resonating with me. I'm trying to get a workout program going. How do I do it? You know? And so that kernel is already inside them of like, I want to make a change. And it just takes someone showing them like, hey, I got a pathway here to get them to maybe put up their hand and say, tell me more, you know? One thing that you try to get through to people is it's not too late. Uh, some folks that get that mindset, man, I'm, look where I'm at. I'm, you know, I'm close to retirement or what have you. And, and, how can I change? It's too yeah. late. I'm not that young guy anymore or that young girl. Yeah. It's a challenge. But you know, that's why I'm out there doing it. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I think we're in a really interesting time right now. It's a time where, you know, you think back to when we were younger, right? The experts wrote books, right? They had credentials. They um, had gone through academia. And that qualified them to talk on certain subjects. And I'm not saying that that's not valid. All of those things are really valid. But we're in a time right now where someone that can show, hey, this is what's actually working for me. You know, I'm in a certain shape or I have a certain success in my life or I've got certain ideas that I'm going to share. And so we have this opportunity to do that, put that out there. And that alone, I think, can inspire people. That can get people to think, wow, if this guy's 50 and is able to get himself into shape, and I would invite people, check out my Instagram, and you'll see, you know, I had that traditional dad bod, if you will, not that long ago, and I whipped myself into shape at age 50. And, you know, am I apprehensive about sharing those pics online? Yes, I am. <laughs> but I thought this can motivate someone, right? Get them to think maybe it's possible in their lives. So I think that's a really, for me, that's the way. Let me show you what I'm doing. If you're curious about it, or if you think, hey, I need a little bit of that in my life, let's talk about it, you know? Well, even picking up a new hobby or wanting to start your own business when you're a little further along in life, you feel like it's too late. And yeah. Try, how do you change that mindset? It, it's, it's just, it is one of those really tough things, you know? And so like, if I think back to what it was for me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I would say like for anyone that's in that middle-aged category, Right. And so that could be in your 40s. I mean, heck, it can be at any age, but I found for me it really hit in middle age where I thought, okay, I'm I'm fairly successful. Like I've I've been in sales for a long time. I'm really good at it. I've I've got a beautiful family and a beautiful home. And you know, but I just was asking myself, you know, am I capable of more? Like, mm -hmm. you know, if I really think back to when I was a younger person, did I think that I was gonna, you know, be further along? And then you just have to be honest with yourself, you know, and this is one of the tough things for people is, I think, really being honest with themselves. I think most of us, deep down, there's part of us that knows we could be doing more, you mm -hmm. know, and we were talking before you started this session, and I know that you were in that camp as well, and you thought to yourself, like, what, how can I be a more positive influence in this world. And now look, you're doing this, right? You're meeting people, you're sharing them with the world. And so I think everybody's got it inside. You just need to tap into that truth within yourself. And then you got to believe that you can make the change, you know? And again, I think if you can look at someone else that's maybe in your demographic or that you admire and go, that person's doing it. Let me give this a shot. You know, let me, let me try it. Um, couple other points I'll make. So I, I truly believe that that little voice inside the conscience is steering us at all times. And so if you can learn to tap into that little voice and what I tell people do this in the morning, right? Wake up in the morning and just ask yourself, what do I regret? You know, what do I regret from yesterday? And you, that little voice will tell you, you know, you probably should have done this and you probably shouldn't have done that. 
just start listening to that voice. I don't care how, how old you are. You'll see, it'll start to steer you in the right direction and then you'll begin to build some momentum. So that's a little tip I'd say for anyone, regardless of your age, start trying to find that little voice with that regret reflection. Oh, yeah. And I understand not everyone is a, a believer, but for myself, I'm a big believer in God. And I've been starting my day off doing this, but mostly at night where I, when I talk to God, I'm like, you know, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. I know I need to improve in this area. It's, it's like a reminder, too, that, hey, I need to change. Oh, big time. And I would actually say a way to look at that little voice yeah. is that that's the voice of God, you know, inside yeah. you that's steering you and trying to help you if you would only listen, you know. And I think that sometimes we know what we're doing wrong, but sometimes we ignore it a little bit, you know, or we get yeah. so used to it that we just uh, we're so used to ignoring the the, that little message or that little voice inside. And so if you can just take some time and go through that difficult process, it, yeah, morning, evening, whenever's good for you, but just five minutes and just ask the question, what do I regret? And that little voice will, will steer you. And the, you know what I've found, Kyle? The so, better I get at this, <laughs> pardon me, the more I hear that voice moment to moment, you know, when I'm about to make a mistake, it's like, oh, yeah. there's the voice. You know, I don't need to step in it anymore. I can actually maybe avoid it. Um, so I think that's if you want to call it the universe or the, the the voice of God or source that's just speaking to us every day. We just have to learn how to listen, you know. Well, irregardless if you believe in God or not, you need something to believe in. Honestly. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think... You know, it's impossible to know what, what's really and truly going on, but I tend to fall into your camp of believing there's a higher power, there's there's a God energy, and we're a part of it. You know, we're here, we're alive, we're, a, we're part of the creation. And uh, I don't know, I just feel a lot better when I'm trying to listen to that voice than when I'm not, when I'm going it alone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I've picked on up on through the years and listening to people that are more successful is that you share as much as you can with other people. So whenever I was supervisor, I would try to train my guys into knowing what I knew how to do. I mean, if I wanted to step up one day, they could come in and take my place. I could say, hey, so-and-so is doing great at this. They can do it. But then you have others that have that mindset of, I don't want anybody to take my job. I'm not going to teach anybody anything. Um, do you ever run across folks like that? Yeah, 100%. And you know what I think that is? That is, um, that's a fearful, scarce mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking in that way that somehow I need to protect what's mine and I need to be apprehensive about other people. And, and I just think you want to actually live opposite to that. Like you said, you want to live abundantly with others. You want to share, mm -hmm. right? If we want like the world that we want, the world we want to live in, we need to embody that, you yeah. know? And if we want a place that's giving and caring and where our fellow person is, is considered then we got to live that way. You know, and it starts with that sharing mindset and not having a scarcity mindset around other people. Um, I think that this extends in a lot of ways as well. I mean, even being a charitable person, right? I've always found in my life, the more that I give to the causes that I care about, the more good seems to come back to me. And it's a bit counterintuitive, but that's the way it works, you know? Mm -hmm. Um how to deal with those people? That's a tricky one. I mean, I don't know if you've got some ideas on that, but I think, like I always think, and as a parent too, example is is probably the best way that we can impact this world. But uh, I don't know if you've had found some strategies with people that you've worked with in your career that have worked. Well, I've tried to explain that to to the guys that I, that I supervise and say, hey, you know, share with somebody what you know, 
And also, you have to keep your mind open to learn things from others as well. Just because you're a boss doesn't mean you can't still learn from the folks that you're you're supervising. Uh, if you're if if you've got a younger person that you're maybe you're friends with, maybe you're working with them, share with them your wisdom and listen to them. My kids, they they taught me how to run these computers and stuff you know yeah this kind of stuff came around a little bit later in life for me and i i never even touched a computer until several years ago and in there you know if if i have a i don't know a skill out in uh, nature or something that i can share whatever it doesn't matter what it is if you can share and pass that knowledge on so it keeps going and keeps going. That, I, I don't know how to explain it other than if you, that you need to take that mindset of teach and let somebody teach you. Well, I think also, you know, if you want to think in broader terms, right? Like we all have a, have a shelf life, right? I mean, mm -hmm. nobody, nobody gets out of this game alive. Right. And the only way that that you can live on is in what you pass on to others, right? And and that's your example. That's what you know. That's everything that you can possibly pass on. And if you can do it in the right spirit, right, in a in a loving and in a caring spirit, that is going to continue on, right? You're going to show other people the way. Hopefully, the people that you influence are going to embody that approach. And so. I think this is one of the most important things we can do. Absolutely. Just pay it, pay it forward, pay it out, um, pass it mm. along so that others can benefit. And hopefully it just continues and continues long after we're gone. You know, what a beautiful thought that is, isn't it? You know, it's something so simple. Like we were talking earlier at the breakfast table. A lot of the younger generation don't even know how to read a, a regular clock. All they've ever known is a digital clock. Uh, you know, to you and I, that's nothing. I mean, we've known that since, what, kindergarten. But you've got 20-year-olds that don't even know how to read a clock or even Probably. drive a, a stick shift car. Yeah. You know, maybe that doesn't come up that often, but I, I would teach my oh, – I taught my kids how to drive a stick shift. Nice. Nice. So, now, yeah, boy, you're making me feel like I got to do the same. You know, I haven't driven <laughs> stick in so long. <laughs> it is. It's a dying art form, you know. But, you know, it gives you a sense of accomplishment, especially oh. since not everybody knows how to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a unique thing for sure these days, you know. Well, try. I remember... I remember going to England with my dad. So that's his side of the family is from there. I was born there. And I remember seeing him re-familiarize himself with driving a stick shift with the opposite hand. Oh, you know, wow. That was always fun when we would go over there. You know, he'd stall that thing out a few times. So <laughs> That's crazy. Well, you're right yeah. along the lines of life coaches, career coaches. You know, call yourself a mindset coach. But what sets you apart from everyone else? Oh, I like that question. I like that question. So I think in the coaching arena, mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of different themes and different approaches that people can take, but really what a coach is there to do is to help an individual that has decided that they're ready for change to mm -hmm. actually follow through because there's no shortage of information out there, Kyle. You know, like I like to tell people, if you want to get in shape or you want to fix your diet or you want to improve your mindset, there's literally a million videos that you can find that are going to do this. But what most people need is a catalyst to help them in changing their behavior and sticking to it when times get tough. So that's what a good coach can do. And everyone is going to vibe with a different personality, coaching personality. That's why this space has, a, there's a lot of space for different coaches because you know, my message is going to maybe resonate with some people that are listening or watching today. 
uh, and it's going to turn other people off. Right. And every coach is going to have that impact on, on different groups of people. So what makes me unique is the fact that I'm me um, and I'm showing what I do. So I would invite anyone that's interested. If you, if you're sort of curious about what I'm talking about today, check out my Instagram and I'm sure we'll share the handle later, but there you're going to see exactly how I run my days and exactly how I think. And you'll be able to decide if you think that I could be the kind of person to support you. Um, what I think makes me different is I don't believe in vices. So I've dropped all of my vices. I'm not a moderation coach that says, yeah, you can drink on the weekends or this sort of thing. I'm a very more of a hard line voice. So drop the vices, get a wake up time, have a morning process, um, you know, work on getting your energy high when you're in a bad mood or a low level of vibration. So that's sort of the crux of my message, but then there's a lot of nuance mixed in. I, I hope I've answered your question well. <laughs> Actually, that resonates with me because I was an alcoholic and, and drug addict. Okay. And for me, I, not even uh, one beer, I, I can't do it. I'm one of those that I'd, keep going until i pass out so i stay away from it altogether but what's been the hear that yeah what what's been the biggest thing you've ever had to overcome in your life that's yeah what a question good questions kyle um so there's there's a couple things so i ended up having a pretty pretty bad injury that I herniated a couple of discs when I was in my early 20s, mm. badly, you know, to the point that it was extremely debilitating. I had to stop all sports. I wasn't able to exercise. I saw specialists all over the place. I saw surgeons. I saw, you know, nobody could really put their finger on why I would throw my back out, putting my shoes on or twisting the wrong way. And when I say throw my back out, I mean, I couldn't move for three days and then I was in pain for two weeks, you know, and really debilitating. So I fell out of shape and I reached for those vices, you know, and for me, it wasn't alcohol so much. It was weed. That was my vice of choice because it allowed me to relax, get my mind off my problems, you know, enjoy being a bit of a couch potato when I wasn't feeling good. Right. Yeah. And so overcoming that, like I kept, seeing new therapists, new physical therapists. Um, so finally getting, getting over that and being able to get back to working out regularly, I think has been my biggest accomplishment. And then to coincide with that is dropping the vices that I used as a coping mechanism to help me through all of that. And this is why I think you and I are on the same page is, is what I've realized is Getting rid of those things and truly getting on your purpose and putting all of your energy and attention into that purpose is going to allow you to achieve whatever you want, you know, get the outcome that you want. But it's got to be an all in thing. If you're just half in, you're going to get half in results. You're, you're going to get what you put into this thing. So for all the people out there that maybe have a big dream that they've been wondering, how do I how do I make this happen? I'm going to tell you how you make it happen. You put all your energy and attention into it. You you give it your all and you cut out all the distractions. And that's what a coach like me can help you with is how to cut out the things that just simply are not supporting that outcome that you're envisioning. And I'm proof. I did it in my own life. So I'd love to help others. And you do this mainly online? Yes, sir. So in fact, it's interesting because I do have some clients that are local to where I live, mm -hmm. but um Certainly it's an online thing and I've got two programs. So one is a group program and one is a one-on-one. -on -one. Both have their merits. The one-on-one, -on -one, obviously I get to work with people on a weekly basis. We're meeting, we're talking about problems. We're talking about strategies to overcome these problems. Very powerful. The group program is lower cost. And, you know, I'm, I don't know about you, but I've worked with coaches in the past and I've always found the group programs to be really valuable because other people will ask the questions I didn't even think to ask, or they'll have the challenges I didn't even really think about. And through that, I'll learn, I'll grow. And so 
Uh, I'd say for even folks that maybe are not used to the coaching model or don't have a lot to invest in coaching, group programs, look look into them because you'd be very surprised at how much you can get out of programs like that. See, I could see that benefit, but I'm one of those, I, I like to just work one-on-one -on -one with someone. I guess, I guess uh, I'm more embarrassed of some of the things that I've got to overcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 and that's the thing, like, I get that. Um, and that's why I've got both. But, you know, both are online. So I run the calls over Zoom, just like this. And this is just another thing, like, what a beautiful time to be alive, right? That we can... We can reach out and we can get our message to a global audience. Like every day, you know, today, just before this call, I was interacting with a fellow in Morocco. Oh, and, wow. And, and a lady in New Zealand and a guy in India and some people in the States. And it's like, what an incredible world this is that we can do this and we can help one another from you know, halfway around the world. Um, but what I'd say to folks is I am such a believer in the coaching model because, again, We've got all the information, folks. You know, whatever problem you, you have in your life, the information's captured somewhere. You can go read it. The biggest problem people have is putting the information into action and holding themselves accountable. It's the biggest challenge we have as human beings. When you make an investment into a coaching program, what you're saying is, I am committed to solving this issue and leveraging this person person's support. And that is a order of magnitude more powerful than trying to do it on your own. Like you'll be shocked at the results you get with this model. Well, I'm sure there's someone out there that's watching this or listening to this and they're on the fence. And I'm, I know you can't give anyone's names out, but who's been like your biggest success story so far? Yeah. Nice question. Well, I'm going to share with you two stories and I'm early days with this. So just as a reminder to everybody, so I've been a, prof a professional seller for 24 years, very successful. So I've been selling to businesses, some of the biggest companies in the world, complex sales. So it's a challenging sales gig, you know, I'm very good at it. And I just launched my coaching practice in January. And so I've only signed up my first clients in the last couple months, but oh, there's okay. two that I'm really proud of. And they're very different, okay? So the first is a woman that was very overweight, very overweight, inflamed, so joints are sore. You know, for anyone in the audience that's overweight, you know, um, you can you can relate to this and you understand what that feels like, that the burden of that weight. And after four weeks on my program, she's down 15 pounds, and she said, you know, the best part, Josh, it's not how I'm looking and, and seeing myself in the mirror. It's just that feeling of inflammation going down. You know, I don't feel like I'm on fire after I've gone for a walk anymore. And that that's just the greatest. And so that just made my day, my week when she told me that, you know, because what could be better than helping someone feel better in their body? Um, mm -hmm. So love that story. And then the other story is completely different. Okay. So this is a fellow in his 30s not obese. In fact, this guy was training for a marathon when I started working for him or with him. But a couple of problems that he's dealing with. One is he is addicted to vaping. And I think a lot oh. of younger people, this is this is the thing, right? Like our generation, yeah. it was the cigarettes, right? And uh, <laughs> now it's the vapes. Um, so he's addicted to that. And also was looking for a level up in his mindset so that he could perform better at work. And within a couple of weeks of working with me, uh, he was done with the vape, had a couple of setbacks with that, but he's not, doesn't own a vape anymore. And so now he's moved on to the gum. So that's been a huge win for him. Um, and he just closed a massive deal in his work and said that the work that we've been doing together has really opened up some new pathways for him. So I know it's a little bit of a nebulous term when you think, mindset coaching, but I just want to put this out to everyone. All of the challenges in your life are due to mindset related issues. So all of the um, challenges, all of the self-imposed issues in your life are there due to the way that you're thinking about life and thinking about your problems. I've got a pathway, a system 
that can help change the way that you think about your problems in general. And you'll see that miraculously, everything from diet to your exercise, to the way that you think, to your performance at work, to your relationships can improve. Um, so if you've got a problem, if you're struggling with something, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and I'll give you some tidbits that will hopefully help you realize that we can, we can make some real progress in your life, you know? What is your website? So my website is just my name. So it's an easy one. It's joshflower.com, just as it sounds, you know, flower in the ground. Mm -hmm. And from there, you'll see a bunch of links over to my Instagram. The reason that I really feed people, Kyle, to my Instagram is because I know that it's rare that someone will hear a conversation like this and say, that's my guy. I want to coach with this fellow for a year. I encourage people, just check out how I'm living. You know, you're going to see me every single day posting religiously. You'll know in a few weeks time or a few months time, or maybe even it'll take you longer than that. But at some point you'll think that I can help you. And uh, when that day comes, I'd love to hear from you, you know, but until then check in on what I'm doing and, and see if it vibes with you. Now, are you just on Instagram? Yeah. So Instagram is my main um, platform that I'm on. I'm on Facebook as well. People can find me there. Um, same name. LinkedIn, I'm there as well, being that I'm in the, in the professional circles. But Instagram is where you're going to get that real interaction. You're going to see me off the cuff each day posting videos about why I'm eating, why, what I'm eating, and a challenge that maybe I'm having and how I'm choosing to think about it. You know, stuff that I think will be valuable to people. Great. I will put all your links in the description just to make it easier for folks. But Josh, man, yeah, this amazing. has been a great conversation, man. Thank you for coming on. Hey, again, Kyle, appreciate you having me on. Appreciate the work that you're doing. You know, you're making a difference. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd listened to some of your episodes before and I'd read some reviews and people said, you know, Kyle is just such a easygoing and a good conversationalist and uh, you're, you're clearly a pro, man. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Really do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, I hope you'll come back. Please hit that subscribe button. And for my regulars, you guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. Until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.